Hi guys! Because many of you are wondering about the differences between the TiVo Flash and the Creality Ender 3, I decided to make a video showing in detail all the differences between these two printers. Both are similar and different at the same time, so what makes them unique? Let's find out by taking a closer look at both of them. The Flash is available in the 50% built version and the 98% built version. The 50% built version takes about the same time to assemble as the Ender 3, and the difficulty is also about the same. For the structure, we see that the Flash has a more attractive design. Also, the Flash has a printing area of 235 by 235 by 265 mm, while the Ender 3 has a printing area of 220 by 220 by 250 mm. The Ender 3 uses a rigid coupling to connect the Z-stepper motor to the lead screw, while the Flash uses a spring type. For a vertical axis, it's better to use a rigid coupling instead of a spring one, as gravity and load will make the spring coupling compress and extend, which is not good. On the other hand, if you have a rigid coupling and a non-straight lead screw, you cannot have a bearing on top or it will mess things up. The strain relief for the heat bed is also a plus on the Ender 3. The flash does not have one, but the cables look secure under the insulation foam. The heat bed of the Ender 3 is a DC bed controlled by a board internal MOSFET and it's made of an aluminum sheet with a Biltec like surface on top. The Flash heat bed is an AC solid state relay control bed made of insulation foam under the aluminum sheet and a glass on top. Being AC powered, the heat bed is more stable and reaches any temperature much faster than any DC bed. To reach 70 degrees C, the Ender 3 took 2 minutes and 39 seconds while the flash only took 49 seconds. To level the bed, the Ender 3 uses big thumb wheels that make the leveling process much easier when compared with the flash. One thing I like with the assembly of the TiVo flash is that while the left side X gantry screws are fixed, the right ones are not and that allows adjustments which means better precision when aligning the frame. With the Ender 3, the right and left screws are fixed and there is no way to adjust if you need to. For the hot end, the Ender 3 uses a micro Swiss clone and the PTFE tube goes all the way down to the nozzle. To cool it, it uses a 40 mm fan. The Flash uses a Volcano clone and the PTFE tube does not go all the way down. Instead, it uses a heat break with the PTFE liner inside. I actually prefer to have the PTFE tube all the way down to the nozzle, as it's easier to work with and gives less issues with time. For layer cooling, the Ender 3 uses a blower fan on the right side. The Flash uses a blower fan on each side which allows a much better layer cooling. For end stop sensors, the Ender 3 uses the standard mechanical switches. The Flash uses proximity sensors which are more precise than mechanical switches. For the X and Y axis that might not make much difference, but for the Z it's a plus for TiVo for having electronic sensors instead of mechanical ones because they have more accuracy and repeatability and the home sequence is completely silent. The stock firmware of the Flash includes many useful options and allows many setting changes, while the firmware of the Ender 3 is very limited and is missing many important options. In the Ender 3, you cannot access and modify settings such as velocity, acceleration and jerk settings. 
you don't have the baby steps function that is very handy to adjust the first layer and you cannot change the preheat settings. The preheat function only heats up the nozzle and not the bed and you cannot define a different temperature. But the most important option of all that is missing in the Ender 3 firmware is the thermal protection. This is a major safety issue and I strongly recommend everyone to update the firmware because of this. The firmware update is much more difficult to do in the Ender 3. You first need to get a bootloader before you can update the new firmware version. For the TiVo Flash, the thermal protection is activated from stock, so updating the firmware is not necessary and the firmware update procedure is much easier to do. The only thing that the Ender 3 firmware includes, and which is very handy, is the print resume in case of a power failure. One other thing that is missing in the Ender 3, and I think it's very handy, is the reset button. In the flash, the reset button is accessible in the front panel. As for the extruder, the flash uses the Titan model, which is one of my favorite. In the Ender 3, the extruder is positioned in a way that the filament is too close and even touches the lead screw. If you have a greased lead screw, the filament will touch and carry that grease. Unlike the flash, the Ender 3 has included a spool holder that is installed at the top of the printer. Unfortunately, it's not compatible with every spool in the market. The filament PM spools, for example, do not fit on it. In the flash, all the electronics are hidden inside the back compartment, while the Ender 3, the power supply is exposed. The Ender 3 has a small 8-bit board with four non-replaceable Allegro A4988 drivers. The board of the flash is an MKS Gen L equipped with replaceable TMC drivers, which is much better. This board, having five driver slots, allows an extra driver for the dual Z motor installation or a dual extruder upgrade. The TMC drivers make the stepper motors of the flash run super silent and sound and skin free. One other thing that I consider a safety issue is that the high current wires from the Ender 3 do not have ferrules and are inserted in the green screw type connectors tint. In the flash, all the connections have ferrules, making this electrical installation much better. Both printers' power supply are 24 volts, but the flash's power supply is only an 8 amp one. This is actually a good thing because it doesn't have a DC heat bed to supply current to, so it doesn't need a big and more expensive power supply. Another major thing I noticed was a very intense burn smell coming from the hot end of the Ender 3 during the first prints. This smell eventually stopped after three long prints, but it was so intense that I had to open all the windows. With the flash, I didn't notice any smell whatsoever. As for the print quality, I ran several prints and even used the same filament to compare. Both printers ran side by side and the results are very close. The models printed with the flash are slightly better than the Ender 3.
As you can see, the surface of the flash is smoother than the Ender 3. And in this model, you can actually see something like the salmon skin effect. For the areas that are hanging out, you can see that the flash was able to perform better, and the smaller parts are better on the flash as well, thanks to the dual layer cooling fan. And finally the price. The Ender 3 can be a bit cheaper when compared to the Flash. Another plus is that the Flash has several upgrade options you can choose from when you order it, such as BL Touch Sensor, Dual Z or TMC2100 drivers. Check the video description for the links for both machines. And that's it you guys, as you can see there are differences between them. I hope this video was useful. Don't forget to follow us here on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We will see you guys next time. Bye.